Have you ever uploaded your song to SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, or Apple Music, and after a while, you started getting some nasty comments about your music? Maybe you shared your music on Instagram or Facebook and started seeing some nasty comments in the comment section. Or maybe you overheard your family members or coworkers talking about your music behind your back and they were saying some mean things about it. Or maybe, just maybe, they even said it directly to you. Believe me, I've been there, and actually to an extreme amount. Because I work with multiple artists a year, and I'm creatively involved in their music as a producer, mixing, or mastering engineer, I also feel personally attached to their music. And so I follow them on Instagram and on Facebook, and as I start seeing the comments that they're getting on their music, I also feel it personally as well, because I was creatively involved in their music. And so over the years, I've actually found a way to flip the script and to not just feel negative about the comments, but to also use it as fuel and to feel positive about it. And I'll show you exactly what I mean here. But first, we need to explain why we notice the negative more than the positive. Because be honest with yourself. For every single negative comment you have, you probably have 10, 15, 20, 30, 50 positive comments. It's not every comment is negative. Most of them are positive, but we notice the negative. We remember the negative comments. On my main channel, Producing in the Box, and actually starting on uh, this channel now too, I'm getting like dozens and dozens of comments a day, and I get tons of positive comments. But then somebody will say something mean or nasty, and for some reason, I notice that one most, and I think about it the most, and it stands out to me. Why is that? So I heard the psychologist, I can't remember the guy's name, but I heard the psychologist say something about the snake in the grass theory. Humans are incredibly good at sniffing out and identifying threats. We find the snake in the grass very, very quickly. We can notice it. We can see the snake in the sticks. We can see the mountain lion on the side of a rock very quickly. We notice it. And this isn't necessarily a bad thing. It keeps us alive and has kept us alive for a very, very long time. And so this isn't necessarily a bad thing, but what happens is because we're so good at identifying the negative and identifying threats, it's all we focus on. And you notice those things in your comments as well. So you're probably thinking, okay, this is a great theory except for the fact that the snake in the grass could kill you. The mountain lion could kill you. The negative comments don't. So that doesn't necessarily add up. And I would actually somewhat disagree with you because it wasn't always this way. Years ago, when we were in smaller groups, if you got shunned from the group, it was a death sentence. They may have not directly killed you, but if they kicked you out of the group and you were left alone, you died. Like there was no way <laughs> really to survive that. And so you wanted to make sure that you were, were having a good relationship with everybody else in your small group. Now you can go to work and your boss might hate you, but yet they still have to pay you. And you could go to the, go to the store and go buy food and whether the cashier doesn't like you or, or not, it doesn't matter. They're still gonna ring up your food and you're still gonna still going to buy it because they care more about the money than they care about you. And so you can use their uh, <laughs> self-interest to your advantage and you could purchase food. And so we're ab able to survive somewhat on our own kind of in society, like at different fractions. I mean, it still takes somebody to make the food and it takes somebody to run the store, but they're all invested in their own self-interest. And so you can just use that to your advantage. But that's a conversation for another time. But how it used to be was if somebody didn't like you, they would kick you out of the tribe and you were, and it was a death sentence. And so we feel like death when somebody has, sends those comments to us because it used to actually be that way. And so we need to understand that you're going to have nasty comments and you're going to get them, and you need to understand that you identify and see those more often than you see the positive ones. And so now we know why, right? We got to this point now where okay, you're like, okay, Andrew, I understand. We get neg negative comments. How do we actually get past this? And so there's a couple things that, that I do that I've done for a while now. And the first is the state you're in frames the message. And so not all comments are actually intended to be negative but you might interpret them, interpret them that way. For example, when my wife sends me the thumbs up emoji, I know she's mad. <laughs> but if my dad sends me the thumb up, thumbs up emoji, that's exactly what he means. <laughs> it mean it it goes beyond that. And and so the the state you're in will also frame the message, which is what am I where am I at right now while I'm reading this? Because if you're tired you're going to interpret the constructive criticism like negative comments. And, and 
it's not necessarily a bad thing. We want to take that constructive criticism. We want to accept it and we want to welcome it. We want to welcome constructive criticism. If you if you want to get better as a musician and a producer and an artist. If you don't, then fine, you can just ignore it. But I am always in the pursuit of being a better musician and a better artist and better producer, better mixing and mastering engineer. And so I want to take that constructive criticism and I don't want to just ignore it entirely. But the thing is, if you're tired, you're going to notice that way more. Imagine the imagine the the chair that you have in your bedroom that you like drape some clothes over and whatnot. At night, it looks like a person staring at you. But during the day, it's just a chair with clothes over it. It's because when you get tired, your body's like, okay, we need to rest, but we need to really, really make sure there's no threats around us right now. And so your brain is actively going off, making sure at, at hyperspeed, making sure that there's no threats around you. So that chair that once was just a chair with clothes now looks like a person staring at you at midnight. It's because your your brain is like, are we completely safe before we rest? So don't look at comments before you go to bed because you're going to interpret the positive constructive criticism as negative mean comments so don't do that don't when you're when you're sitting on the toilet and you're bored or you're (laughs) or you're in a social situation you're trying to avoid the uh, other people so you like scroll through your phone trying to hide from everybody that's a very very bad time to look at comments and to notice those negative comments and so you're actually interpreting the somewhat constructive criticism as negative comments and so i like to block out a certain time a week where i read my comments And I say, okay, I'm going to read my comments and I'm going to see what I can get from them. And just framing that and putting myself in a better state will actually allow me to understand those comments better. The second thing is, was it intended for harm or was it intended for good? Because not all comments are intended for negative or intended for harm. Most of them probably aren't. But you need to understand whether it was or not. And sometimes it's very direct. Sometimes it's very straightforward and direct. And they are just absolutely being mean. In that case, ignore those comments and be like, you know what? That's just how they are. And then you move on and you see some constructive criticism and you can actually take that as advice. And then you can see all of the positive comments. So that's the first thing. But those negative comments still hurt. I'm not saying they don't. I'm just saying that if you can put yourself in a better state, you can interpret them better. And you can interpret some of the ones that are meant for good and not interpreting them into meaning harm or meaning negative comments. So that's the first thing. I like to actually set out specific time to read my comments and ask myself, is it intended for harm or for good? And if you're ever confused because text is really hard, like I was said earlier, when my dad sends this, it means, okay. When my wife sends this, it means she's probably mad. So you have to interpret those separately. And so if you're ever confused, you could just be like, well, if I'm assuming anyway, why not just assume positive intent? Because that's all you're doing is assuming you're assuming if you are confused of whether it's for good or for for harm, just assume it's for good because that's all you're doing is assuming. Just assume positive intent. That's been one of the best advices I've ever gotten in my entire life. Best piece of advice I've ever gotten is assume positive intent. When my wife says something to me, I assume she means it positively. When a client says something to me, I assume they mean it in a positive way. It's like if I'm ever confused, just assume it's positive. And you're more likely going to be right most of the time. So, uh, we now know why we have negative comments here. We now know how to put ourselves in a state that we can interpret the comments better. So now, how do we actually deal with the nasty comments? How do we protect ourselves? So, being intentional with consuming feedback is going to help a ton. Assuming the positive intent is going to help a ton. But here's the real kicker. This is what actually changed my life for the better. This is when I actually started going and making YouTube videos uh, and I was able to ignore some of the positive, com- or sorry, the, the negative comments. This is when I was actually able to start building a portfolio of tons of music that I've been able to work with artists and actually take those negative comments and use them as fuel and use it as positive, positive energy. So this is the thing. Even the best have haters. If you're getting negative comments, it means you're on the right path. And I mean that genuinely. I mean that with my whole heart. Look at my comment section here down below or look at the comment section on my other videos on this channel or on my main channel. You're going to see some negative mean comments. That just means that I've gotten in front of enough people to get negative comments. If you're not getting any negative comments, you're probably not reaching enough people. 
So I remember the first time I got a negative comment on my first YouTube channel after I had already kind of like worked through this process of knowing that even the best of the best get negative comments. In fact, they might actually get more hate than somebody who's not the best of the best. So framing that, as soon as I see a negative comment, that's a good sign that I'm on the right path. And so I remember the first negative comment I got on my first YouTube channel, Producing in the Box, my main one. That one, I, just, I was so happy because I was like, yes, finally, I got a negative comment. I'm reaching enough people to get a negative comment. I finally, finally got there. And shifting that to when I see negative comments, that's a good sign because Taylor Swift gets a lot of hate. Nickelback gets a lot of hate. A lot of these popular artists that have really blown up and done really well for their with their careers, like incredibly well with their careers, get a lot of hate, get a lot of negative comments. And so if you want to be the best of the best and you want to reach a lot of people and you want your music to be heard by masses, then those negative comments are necessary. You actually need them to know that you're actually on the right path. And so lastly, and I'm sure none of you are actually watching this, but if you're the kind of person who leaves negative comments, and I'm sure if you're that kind of person, you haven't watched this far into the video. The problem is the, the people that needed to hear this message left within the first 30 seconds. They left within the first minute of this video because they have no attention span. They're just very angry people all the time. And so, but by chance, if you're one of these people that have, that leaves negative comments, first off, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm sorry that you hurt the way you do. But you need to understand that pushing your hurt off onto somebody else doesn't take it from you. It's actually like a cancer. It splits and it spreads. You leaving the hate on somebody else's music because you feel insecure or you feel hurt is not going to eliminate that pain from you. All it does is split and goes to somebody else. And you're just spreading that hate around. And it's not going to leave you. The only way for it to leave you is for you to actually look deep within and start making some music yourself. Start creatively expressing yourself instead of trying to tear down everybody else. There's two ways to build the tallest building in a city. The first way is to tear down everybody else's building and leave your standing. The second way is to build the tallest building in the city. Which one do you think takes more work? Tearing down everybody else's and constantly trying to tear down everybody else so that way you can look tall? Or you actually just focus on yourself, focus on writing music, focus on your own creative acts and build the tallest tower in the city until at one point you're undeniable. You're the best of the best and you can forget about the rest. I hope this video inspired you and I hope you guys like these unfiltered videos. What do you think? Have you ever gotten a nasty comment? What was the first mean comment that you remember? Uh, let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, the first mean comment I ever got was somebody said my unibrow looked like a caterpillar was crawling across my forehead. <laughs> what was the first uh, mean comment that you ever got? Let me know down uh, in the comments below. And uh, as always, go create some incredible music. The world needs to hear your art. I can't wait to hear your music. Go create some incredible music. See you in the next one.